So let's do an ANOVA hypothesis test. Um, so returning to our example about comparing four, uh, three treatments for depression versus placebo, here are our data. So if we wanted to conduct a hypothesis uh, about whether one of these is different than the others, we w might want to use our six-step heuristic. In ANOVA, uh, we'll go ahead and state and check our assumptions. Uh, assumptions that are about our population, is it normally distributed? Frankly, I don't know. Are there, is the distribution, are the distribution of scores uh, uh, of, of depression normally distributed? I don't know, frankly. Do I have a large enough n so that the sampling distribution of the sample mean will, will take on roughly a normal shape? The answer is yes. I don't know variance, and we'll check homogeneity of variance. We have to make assumptions about our data. Do we have, what is our level of measurement? In this case, we probably have integral or ratio level data. And lastly, we have to state and check our assumptions about uh, an assumption about our sample. Do we have random assignment across treatment conditions? The answer is yes there. <clears throat> now, our null and alternative hypothesis, if we generalize from a two-sample t-test, for example, we might think that the null hypothesis could be stated the mean of the Prozac group is equal to the mean of the Zoloft is equal to the mean of the yellow bill and the mean of the placebo. And if uh, our alternative would be that they're not equal. But it turns out that that alternative hypothesis sets too high a, a bar. ANOVA doesn't actually test that they're all different or they're all unequal. What it tests is that it, there's one that's not equal to the rest of them, or one is not equal to at least one other one. Now, in order to state that, state this in, in, in really accurate terms, it gets really complicated, and, and it takes a while. So we're going to simplify this and just, just go with our alternative hypothesis now that the null is wrong, that they're not all equal, that there's at least one difference embedded in, in there. That's what our conclusion is going to be if we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. So we're going to choose the sampling distribution in step three. We have four groups. We assume homogeneity of variance. We have interval racial level data. We have independent samples, random assignment. We're going to do a, a one-way single factor or independent samples analysis of variance. One-way single factor independent samples are, are sort of all synonymous names. They're all the same for a particular form of ANOVA. We're going to learn a a number of, of different ways to do analysis of variance. This is called sometimes a one-way ANOVA, or a single-factor ANOVA, or an independent samples ANOVA. <clears throat> In step four, we're going to set a significance level. Like good psychologists, we'll set our alpha at 0.05, and we'll state our decision rules like we always do. If P is less than 0.05, we're going to reject the null and accept the alternative. If P is greater than 0.5, we're going to fail to reject the null and fail to accept the alternative. So our computations. If we were doing ANOVA by hand, the best way to do this is to arrange it data by group. And for each group, we compute the sum of all the scores, we square the scores and sum them, we calculate the mean, the sum of squares, and n. Then we compute the grand mean by adding all the scores and dividing by n. And we compute this term n times the grand mean squared, where the grand mean is just the sum of all the scores divided by n, sum of all the x's divided by big N. We compute the sum of squares between, which is just n times each sample mean squared summed up, and then we subtract this nmg squared. So I, the reason I calculate this term is that we use it in a couple of places to calculate different sum of squares, intermediate calculations of sum of squares. So we calculate sum of squares between, sum of squares within by just adding up the sum of squares. Uh, that's sum of squares within. Pool the variance. Remember, we just add up the sum of squares within and divide by the appropriate degrees of freedom. Sum of squares total, we calculate this way, and it's a good check for us, as, as we'll see. We compute the appropriate degrees of freedom. We fill in an ANOVA table. We compute mean square and compute F. So this is what an ANOVA table looks like blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute sum of squares between, sum of squares within, sum of squares total. We're going to compute degrees of freedom between, degrees of freedom within, degrees of freedom total. Then mean square just comes from sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom equals mean square. Sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom equals mean square. Then we're going to take the ratio of the mean squares, which are variance. Remember, mean square is a synonym of variance. 
one variance divided by the other variance will give us our F ratio. Then we can use Excel to get our P value. So <clears throat> to start with, uh, the Prozac group, I've just done these calculations, and then I've also calculated n times the mean of, uh, of, of that group squared. I did it for Zoloft, I did it for Ellaville, I did it for placebo. Calculated the grand mean by just adding up all the scores and dividing by the number of scores. That's equal to 15.83. n times the grand mean squared is just 24. I have 24 total observations times the grand mean squared is equal to that term. Then using those terms, I can calculate sum of squares between, which is just the sum of all these n times the mean squared. I think that's wrong. I think that needs to have a square on it. Um, <clears throat> and what we get is we get um, 398. I calculate sum of squares within, where I just add the intermediate sum of squares, 183, and then I calculate uh, sum of squares total. Now it should be that the sum of squares total equals the sum of squares between plus sum of squares within, and it does. My <coughs> degrees of freedom terms are the degrees of freedom is just number of groups minus one. Degrees of freedom is the total number of observations minus the number of groups, and the degrees of freedom total is the total number of observations minus one. Those should add up to three plus twenty. Does it equal twenty-three? Yes, it does. I put my data in my ANOVA table, and then I calculate my mean squares and my Fs. Then I uh, look at uh, um, uh, a p-value associated with an F with 3 and 20 degrees of freedom, and that's equal to 0 0.00034. So, since our p-value is less than 0.05, we reject the null and accept the alternative. The, the, and the alternative just says that the null is wrong, so we're rejecting it. We conclude that at least one of the drugs is better at treating depression than at least one other drug. I know that's an unfortunate sort of conclusion, but we have a difference there. Uh, between the effectiveness of the drugs. We're going to be able to go in and test uh, which ones exactly are best, but we're going to save that for another time now.